Hey there, welcome back to Too Many Plugins, Ableton Edition. This is part four. We're talking about the operator, Ableton operator. Part one, we discussed the oscillators. Then part two, we discussed the oscillator and envelope window. Part three, we went over LFOs. Part four, we're getting into the filter window, uh, and uh, it's getting fun, and it's getting in the weeds. If you have not seen the other parts, I highly recommend to watch those first because we go over each individual button and knob and setting and talk about what each one of them does and what they mean to you, and uh, so I won't be re going over those again because I already touched on them. Uh, so go back and watch those if you just stumbled on this. Um, all right, so here we go. Um, filter. All right, so here's it's the default patch. All right. We are going to change the default patch because I want you to be able to hear all the effects that this filter has, uh, which is much easier when it's a sine wave um, because... Uh, like I said, back in one, here's all your harmonics. You're full across the board. You got all the harmonics jammed into one sound. So, first, let's talk about these uh, handful of buttons. And um, and we want to hear this while we play with the buttons. So we're going to change the frequency, and we'll get into that. Um, again, I'm not going to go over the theory behind a filter. Um, that's another video. Go watch that video when you know what a filter does, then come back and watch this, because we're just talking about what each of these buttons do, because sometimes they're not clear in regards to other, every synthesizer is a little different, um, and the theory applies across the board, but the application doesn't apply across the board. So, if you don't know what a filter does, go watch a video that explains what a filter does. We're going to talk about what these buttons do. All right, giddy up. Um, so there's two different filter types here, a um, 12 dB and a 24 dB filter. And, and here's a simple illustration. One of them is bri brighter than the other. And uh, it's the, the 12 dB one is sweeping. Um, the drop off is, is faster, or excuse me, is not as fast. So it's a little bit brighter. You have a few more harmonics. That's what that means. Your different filter types. So what do we got here? We got a low pass filter. We got a high pass filter. We got a mid, a band pass. We got scoop. We're gonna scoop it out. Scooping out the mids instead of a band pass. And then we have the filter that morphs, which uh, we'll get into in a second. But when I selected it, you see this morph over here became active. Um, so we'll get into that in a second. Um, frequency. What point does the filter kick in? So I think, I think if you know what a filter does, you know what that is. Resonance. How resonant is the filter? And here I'm going to say, danger, danger, watch out because um, it can, it can actually, you, you can really start getting some nasty feedback and other stuff, um, not feedback, uh, you, some clipping that's, that's, that's pretty nasty at times. Um, I'm, I'm even going to throw a compressor on here just uh, just to be safe. Better, better safe than sorry. All right, so uh, I'm going to keep it on the low pass uh, for now. Um, and uh, Oh, wait a second. We forgot one. There's different types of filters. Um, so depending on if you're um, high, high pass, low pass, mid, um, whichever one you've chosen, there's different types of filters that are modeled after famous other famous filters and this is how crazy things get in the synthesizer world where people uh and rightfully so people love like the sound of old moog synthesizers 
That's right. It's pronounced Moog. M O O G is pronounced Moog, not Moog. So sorry if you've been pronouncing it wrong all your life. Um, but th- I forget which one of these it is. But one of these uh, choices is modeled after like the classic Moog filter, the low pass filter, um, which is a pretty sweet filter. It's what gives uh, Moogs their character. Um, and uh, each one of these is modeled after something famous, and it, it's you can get into the um, Ableton um, uh, uh, help files, and it'll explain all that um, if you're really curious as to what's what. Um, but just rest assured, they do all have their own character. So, um, so, so play with each one, and um, it, it's subtle, but there are differences. Um, so, all right, we talked about all the buttons and all what, what these things mean here. Um, yeah, I like that. All right, so let's get into the window here, the envelope and filter. So this, by this point, this should be looking really familiar to you because we've been here before. Uh, the filter, or the, excuse me, the envelope, ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release, ADSR, we know what that means. Now let's say you want to create like a P-Funk style bass. You know, like, or whatever. It doesn't have to be P-Funk. Whatever, your classic um, basses. Um, so you're going to mess with your, you got, you, you know, you're going to mess with your attack. I think my resonance is a little too high. What do you think? And this envelope percentage is your friend. Because if you're just all the way, if you're at zero, which is what it defaults to, then the filter is just applied. And there, there's the filter, by the way. Um, but when you go into these negative numbers... Not perfect, but you get the idea. You see where it's going. Um, so a little bit of shaping, and we're going to have a cool P-Funk type sound. Um, so to ADSR, I'm not going over that again. You know what it does. Same thing. And same thing with this initial. Same thing with peak. Like Those are from any the other ones. does the same stuff. Loop. Um, you can hear what it does. And... So same way you can loop an LFO and you could loop the um, and you could loop the envelope when in the attack, then you can do it in the filter too. You get the idea. So I, I think if you've watched the other videos, you know what all these do, and you're going to know how to play with them by now. Um, time, uh, velocity versus time. Um, uh, to, you got to turn off the loop there. So let's uh, when you have a long... So you heard it sweep there versus... It's faster. So just if you want it to sweep faster, lower or slower, depending on how hard you hit the note, that's your that's your friend there. We know what envelope does. So let's switch over to the filter window. Um, bing. All right. So um, when you're playing with these, ooh, look, there it is. And then your resonance. Those are and so it's spiking that frequency wherever that is. It's spiking it. All right, so uh, there is your illustration in real time of how it's of what it's doing to what, um, and the filter has its own filter drive so, and its own shaper. And um, the shaper 
you can see like it all has its own character. So I just recommend playing with that and the drives as well. Um, so when you apply the filter drive and you've applied your shaper, then applying which uh, filter here you're choosing, which of whichever type it is, is going to affect the character further. Um, so everything affects everything else. So um, this is when you want to get into real detail and you're like, and you want to find what is the best sounding, best fitting, um, most effective, what have you. So, uh, so that's where you do it. Frequency versus velocity is actually a pretty important um, setting. So I'm just change the patch here a little bit. Infinite release, just a few seconds. Um, and if you're up a little bit on the keyboard. So I'm hitting harder, I'm hitting softer, and it's affecting the frequency. It's act you can't see it, but it's adjusting this in real time as I'm playing the keyboard. Right there I hit it soft. There I hit it hard. Um, frequency to the keys. Uh, same idea we talked about before, um, where uh, only it's now applying to frequency. So if I want it to apply less at one end of the keyboard and more at another end of the keyboard, then I go to negative number. Uh, a negative number if I want the low end to be brighter and the high end to be duller, um, or vice versa. Now the low end is duller and the high end is brighter. Simple enough. Um, let's see, shaper. Um, you got filter drive and you got shaper drive. So you, you, you can really get some dirty sounds. Um, when you start playing with your shaper drive and your filter drives, um, it, it, you get some great distortions. So I just encourage you to play with that and see it for yourself. Uh, and then last, dry, wet. So like if you, let, you know, you know, for example, let's just max this out. Let's go crazy here. So we got shaper and we got, um, and, and we got a shaper all the way up and then we got our filter all the way up and let's see we got a saw let's change this one to square let's turn them up all right all right so we got some noise it's, it's not crazy distorted but it's distorted enough for our purposes um and then your dry wet So there you go. Your dry wet is going to affect, you know, how, how much of that filter and that shaper, um, specifically the drive, how much of that do you actually want there? All the way. Very little. So I think you get the idea. Um, thanks for hanging in there for this one. Uh, the next one, we're going to talk about the pitch envelope section. Um, it'll be some more reviews, some stuff that you should be familiar with by now. Um, but we're going to go over it anyway and, and talk about how you can make some super weird sounds using this individual pitch envelope. Um, so if uh, all this is making sense, uh, then please let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. You know how that stuff works. Um, and uh, we'll get into a uh, pitch uh, and so forth on the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers.